I got a fire word for you guys. God just blew my mind and gave me such a profound revelation while I was praying this morning and brought it back. Blah, 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 blah. Bro, sorry, I'm so excited. Brought it back to scripture and then brought it back to a dream that I had all the way in February. And how God allowed me to even remember all of this in a matter of like one second just because I was praying. So I was praying on my knees this morning and I was asking God to allow my old patterns, my old thought patterns, my old behaviors to not pollute the transformation that God has already done inside of me to for new relationships, new friendships, new purpose, new assignments that God has given me and to not allow my old ways of living to pollute my new ways of living. Now that I am a new creation, I'm a born again believer and God brought me back to scripture and it, it's so good when you're reading God's word and then you read something and you know what it's talking about, you know what it means, but then later on when you're living out something and you think back to that exact scripture and you're like, wow, I'm actually applying this to my life and now understanding it in a new way. And so God brought me back to Mark. So I've been studying Mark and I was in chapter two, like a couple of weeks or maybe like a week or two ago or something. But as I was praying, God brought this back to my mind and was like, gave me like an aha moment. Okay, so I'm gonna read you. So Mark chapter two, let's start in verse 19, okay? So this is about fasting. This is about Jesus. He's coming and doing new ways, new teachings, new miracles. And the Pharisees are asking him about fasting. And so Jesus is telling his disciples, like, I don't want you to um, have the religion of the Pharisees regarding their ways of fasting. And so we're gonna start in verse 19. Jesus said to them, the wedding guests cannot fast while the groom is with them, can they? As long as they have the groom with them, they cannot fast. But the time will come when the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new patch pulls away from the old cloth and a worse tear is made. And no, and this is the verse, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost as well as the skins. No, new wine is put into fresh wineskins. Okay, God blew my mind. Now, let me explain what this means regarding the exact passage. So Jesus's point was made clear by these examples. He was using parables and he was saying that you can't fit his new life, his new ways into the old forms. So Jesus was coming to introduce something new and not patch up something old. He couldn't put the new on top of the old because the old would tear, the old would birth, or the old were the old would burst and the old would break. So God is coming to make something completely new, not patching up the old. You cannot put new garments on old garments, otherwise it will tear. You cannot put new wineskin into old wineskins, otherwise it will burst. And so this was so good because Jesus is was Jesus is referring to the religion of the Pharisees specifically regarding fasting. Okay, this is regarding fasting. And then I'm going to tell you about how God applied it to my life. So old wineskins like the Pharisees rules were brittle and inflexible and God is coming to break those laws. And he's like, my way is better. I'm coming to create something completely new. He's creating a new life and you can't put it into the old ways. So as I was praying this this morning, I was praying, I was like, God, help me to develop new patterns, new behaviors, new thoughts, and not allow my old ways and my old behaviors to pollute what you're doing in my life currently. Like God is sending new relationships, new friendships, new environments, new rooms, new things, new open doors. And God's like, you have to leave your baggage at the door. You cannot bring your old baggage and make it fit into your new life. And then God brought me back to, so as I was like, I was literally praying on my knees and God brought this verse to my mind. And then I was like, whoa, that just gave me like such a revelation because, so I'm a dreamer and God speaks to me the most in visions and dreams. And he had been giving me these dreams all the way back in February. And I, I kept having these dreams. So I, I, in February of this year, I had only been saved for like six months. And I kept having all of these dreams of me being on all these trips with friends, me being on trips with family, and all of their luggage and all of their suitcases and everything was fitting in the car, fitting in the plane, fitting in the on the cruise ship, fitting in all these places. It was always like a transportation, like a car, a train, um, a cruise ship. 
and for some reason my baggage was not fitting like i would try to fit it in the trunk i would i would try to fit it in the back seat i would try to cram it into the plane storage i would try to fit it onto the cruise ship and and, and every single time they're like sorry um the ship is full and we don't have any extra room for more baggage and i'm just like why did i keep having these dreams so God had me go back and type in the word baggage in my phone notes to pull up my dreams, okay? So it pulled it up and let me read you. This is just so good, okay? I had literally been a new Bible reader at this point, so I hadn't even read Mark yet when I dreamt this dream, but God just interpreted my dream from literally months ago, from February, you guys. Okay, so this was my dream. I said, I had a dream last night with me wheeling a suitcase outside to put it in a parked car. I was with my family and my suitcase was the only one that wouldn't fit in the car and we were trying to figure out how to pack it. It wouldn't fit in the trunk and it wouldn't fit in the back seat. God gave me such a revelation. He's telling me to leave my baggage. I don't need to bring my baggage to this next season of my life. That's the old me and I need to be the new me, but I first must leave the baggage. God has forgiven my past mistakes and I need to also forgive myself and leave it behind so I can step foot into my new self. And so the message God was giving me then, so this is what I wrote in my phone notes then, I said the message that God was giving me was that he's preparing me in this season, but I need to get rid of my baggage. It cannot come with me to this next season of my life. And God led me to verse, um, past Isaiah 43, verse 18 through 19, and it says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And so I got that revelation then saying, God is telling me to get rid of my baggage. But then when I was praying this morning, God brought Mark chapter two, uh, t- chapter two, verse 22 about putting, you cannot put new wine into old wine skins you have to put new wine into new wine skins so now that you are a new creation now that you are a born again believer and god has created this new life you cannot put you cannot bring the old and bring it with you into your new life into your new season into these new relationships into all these new blessings and promises that god has for you you cannot step foot into the new season with bringing your old baggage into it and this includes relationships friendships old thought patterns behaviors reactions like you cannot react in the same way that you once used to react in before you were saved so it keeps going so i says that was what i was worried about with and having anxiety about my old self polluting my new self God is saying, stop worrying in order to forget, in order to forget the former things do not dwell on the past. So not only is God saying to leave the baggage at the door, but he's saying not only leave the baggage, forget the baggage, forget the former things do not dwell on the past. Because even if you left the bag at the door, but you're still thinking about all these things that you did, all your sins that Jesus has already forgiven you for, you were a born again believer. He cleansed you of your sins. It's not, the baggage could still be in your mind. So God is saying, get rid of not only the things, the tangible things, the baggage, but also forget the former things in your mind. You cannot have the old thought patterns going into the new season. So God is saying, get rid of your baggage, get rid of your baggage. And this is just a reminder that God can change anyone in a day. Do not judge someone based on who they were before they had Christ. One day Paul was killing Christians and then the next day he was a Christian. One day God God switched David from a sheep boy to a king in one moment. And God can do the same thing for us in one moment. So God is saying, do not bring the old into the new. Do not put new wine into old wineskins. And God is saying, get rid of your baggage and leave it at the door. Not only physically, but also mentally. So good.